Hi everyone, this is Teacher Francis, grade 4. I'm going to take you through science and technology. And our main topic of today, we're going to discuss about uh, human digestive system. Uh, the human digestive system, it, it consists of three main parts. Number one, we have the alimentary canal. And number two, we have the liver. And then number three, we have the pancreas. So those are the main three parts of the human digestive system. I'm going to talk about keenly on the alimentary canal. Remember, alimentary canal is a tube that connects from the mouth to the anus. Alimentary canal is a tube that connects the mouth all the way to the anus. And number three are the other main part of the human digestive system, liver and pancreas. They are not part of the alimentary canal. So we're going to discuss about the alimentary canal. So alimentary canal consists of the following parts. We have the mouth, we have the gullet, another name for the gullet is esophagus. We have the stomach, we have the small intestine, we have the large intestine, rectum, and anus. So this is a process, a complete process that has to move from the mouth without resting all the way to the anus and the process is over. So we're going to discuss about every part and its function and what happens there. Then from there, where, where does it go one by one? Starting from the mouth. Here is the mouth. Once you take your food to the mouth, that food has to be broken down into small pieces that these small pieces we are able to swallow them to the stomach or to other parts of the alimentary canal. So the first thing that happens in the, in the mouth is with the help of the teeth, that food has to be broken down into small pieces with the mix and the mixture of saliva. So saliva and the teeth, as the teeth break down the food, saliva also helps to mix da that food. For, ease, for the process of being that food to be swallowed is to be easy. Another thing that happens in the mouth is digestion of starch food starts in the mouth. Not all types of food are being digested in the mouth, but specifically on the starch food, that is digestion of starch food starts in the mouth. So once you have Break, broken down that food into small, small substance or particles that you are able to swallow them, it has to move now from the mouth to the stomach. But before reaching the stomach, it has to pass through a tube called gullet. So gullet, another name for gullet is here. Another name for gullet is esophagus. So as that food moves from the mouth to the stomach, it has to pass that the passage is called esophagus. It has to pass that to the stomach. And that food, it does not just pass, like just passing. It has to move in a wave like manner. So the process by which that food moves like in a wave, move, moves in a wave like manner from the mouth to the stomach is now what we call peristalsis. I repeat again, peristalsis is a process by which food moves from the stomach, from the mouth to the stomach in a wave-like manner. Pause. In a wave-like manner to the stomach. So once the food reaches the stomach, I'm done with the mouth and the gullet. Remember the, food, the process is on. It has to move from the mouth to the gullet. It has moved from the gullet now going to the stomach. A stomach is an el el elastic bag, not a bag for carrying books or anything this, when you go to the supermarket to buy, but just a stomach for carrying food. So once that food has to move moved from the mouth through the gullet to the stomach, it has to stay there in between two to three hours. Not resting, the digestion still continues. Once that food stays there, the walls of a stomach, they produce some digestive juices. Those juices produced by the walls of the stomach, they help in the process of digestion. 
So as the food still it is in the stomach, still the process of digestion is on. The walls of the stomach, they are produced, they, uh, they are produced digestive uh, juices. The juices are, we have gastric juice, and then we have hydrochloric acid. Those are the two juices produced in the stomach. Those juices, they help in the process of digestion. Remember the food, the process does not end there. It has again to move. We are traveling, we don't have to stand somewhere. As much as we're standing somewhere, the process still continues. Now the food that has been digested in the stomach has to move again. It has to move from the stomach all the way to the small intestine. Now, as it moves from the stomach, it reaches the upper part of the small intestine. The upper part of the small intestine, we call it duodenum. Now what happens there, remember there's something I told you. Liver and pancreas, as part of the human body, they are not part of the alimentary canal. So remember our food has moved now from the stomach, it has to come to the small intestine. Already it is there in the small intestine, but now in the upper part of the small intestine that you call duodenum. In duodenum, as you, take, as you look here, the pancreas is over here, and the gallbladder is here. They are slightly close to the duodenum. So the liver has to produce a juice we call bile juice, and the pancreas has to produce pancreatic juice. So the two juices produced by the liver and the pancreas, they help in the process of digestion. Still the process is on. We're not standing anywhere. As much as we're standing somewhere, as much as the food is standing somewhere, the process still is on. So the liver has to produce bile juice, and the bile juice produced by the liver is stored in the gallbladder. So, and pancreas produces pancreatic juice. So the two juices produced by the liver and the pancreas, they help in the digestion of food. We go. Now the food has to mix, uh, the process has to continue. All the way the food has to, the digested food has to move from the duodenum all the way to the lower part of small intestine. We call it ileum. Another name for small intestine is ileum. So the walls of the small intestine, they produce also some Jesus, I can say, they just, as I said, another name for small intestine is ileum. What happens in the ileum, as is, uh, ileum is, number one, that is where the last digestive juice is being produced by the walls of the small intestine. And then, number two thing that happens there, that is where digestion of food ends, being that we have the last digestive system, the, 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 the last digestive juice produced by the small intestine, that is where digestion of food ends. And this is what happens. After the food has moved from the duodenum all the way, the upper part of the small intestine called duodenum, all the way to the small, the, the small part, the lower part of the small intestine, what you call the ileum, the juice produced the last one, it has to complete, it has to mix the digested food, of course, and then the process ends there. So the digestion process starts from the mouth and ends in the small intestine. So the small intestine does two major work. Number one, it secretes the last digestive juice. It secretes the last digestive juice. Number two, absorption of digested food to other parts of the body happens in the small intestine. The process still continues. I told you this is a process from the mouth all the way to the anus. So we have moved from the mouth, gullet, stomach, small intestine. Next stage that we have to go, the food has to move, is to the large intestine. Large intestine, what happens there is Absorption of water and mineral salt from the digested food takes place in this large intestine. And another name for large intestine is called colony. Colony is another name for small, large intestine. So that is where after the digested food has been digested, the one that has no undigested food, it has to come to the large intestine 
The large intestine now absorbs, wa absorbs water and mineral results out of it. So the remaining part, the remaining food that, has no, uh, that is undigested in the large intestine has to move again all the way to the rectum. So it, the work of the rectum, it stores undigested food temporarily for short like two to three hours. So that is when for some two to three hours, like if you take your breakfast in the morning, lunch, and evening, supper, and then before you go to bed, you feel like, oh, I, I want to go to the washroom. You're feeling something that you want to go to the washroom. So the, your rectum is full with the undigested food. So you want to go out of the washroom and remove the undigested food. But the rectum does not remove it. Again, the undigested food has to move from the rectum all the way to the anus. So with the moment you go to the washroom, you sit down, you remove that digested food coming out through the rectum, to through the anus. So the anus is the last part of the alimentary canal. It helps us to pass out the undigested food. So that is why you're being encouraged, number one, wash your hands or clean your hands using a sanitizer, not only to prevent corona, but other diseases. Because the food you take, the kind of water you take, it has to pass all the way from the, all the way from the mouth, gullet, stomach, small intestine, large intestine, all the way before you go, number one, to excrete. I remember I told we learned something, that excretion is one of the characteristics of living things. Both the living things, they have to excrete. So the kind of excretion that we do as human beings is going to the washroom, number one, either by sweating or by removing the waste product from our body through the anus or by urination. So I advise you not only to wash your hands to prevent corona but other diseases because the food we take, it has to pass through all our body. And if you can imagine if you take something that is not bad, it is going to affect your body and you are healthy. So my boys and girls, as you're home, be good boys and girls, to your mom and daddy, to your auntie, to everybody. Because I always say, good is good, even if nobody's doing it. And bad is bad, even if everybody's doing it. Bye. I love you all. Thank you.